If you've followed my channel for a while, you may recall that I built one of these Hot Wheels Jack Rabbit specials for the National Red Wine Day Challenge on May 18th of this year. That's a very special day for me personally, and uh, I thought it appropriate to do something extra special, so I did the Jack in the Box promotional edition of the casting for that build. This is an ugly little car, and yet I love it. It's, there's something cute about it, and uh, it holds a special place in my heart. Since I had another casting, I thought I'd try to do a restoration with a little twist to it. The Jackrabbit Special was designed by Larry Wood, and it was only produced for one year, 1970. All of them were painted in white enamel. You see, this one uh, was well-loved, well-played with. It, uh, it's a little dirty. <laughs> I, I almost have a feeling that maybe just like a drop or two of Coke was spilled on it or something like that, because you see, it's kind of like that, that glass has two pins that hold it to the interior, and there was just this brown, sticky stuff on it, and it just almost seemed like dried-up Coke. So... Uh, you know, once I peeled that apart. <laughs> There's times like this that you wish you had longer fingernails. But when in doubt, you know, just uh, grab a screwdriver and you can pry it apart. You may notice that the back half of that interior is also cracked. It, uh, yeah, right there where my thumb is. There's just a little crack in it. So we're going to have to glue that together. But all in all, it's, you know, it's a pretty nice looking little casting. I polished the heck out of the bottom, uh, threw it in a lime away to clean it up, then polished it. And this has the cap style wheels, which <laughs> there is no easier wheel swap than the cap style wheels. You just run an X-Acto knife on the original wheels on, the, on that seam and it pops the outer cap off. You get yourself a nice set of replacement caps. And uh, the deep dish style I prefer, but uh, you get whatever you like, throw them on there, and you know, you're, you're almost done. Uh, more often than not, the axles are bent a little bit, like these are. And so you need to use, there's a tool you can also get online, like from the red wine shop. And uh, you just kind of wedge that in there. It, it, it's made specifically, there it is, for adjusting it. And at this point, I've adjusted it, and it's rolling pretty good. I ended up repairing that little crack in the back. That's that soft, rubbery kind of uh, plastic. And uh, I ended up just using CA glue on that to hold it together. And uh, I didn't want to hold it forever, so I used some of the accelerant on there and you've seen me do this before where i just put a drop out of the bottle i really should just buy a dropper and <laughs> do it that way i've seen other builders have droppers for it and it's like man i should do that it's time for flits uh i love flits polish i don't know if you watched paul over at fat guy productions most recent live stream but it was wonderful to see that the company flits the company actually recognized the fact that he's basically turned on a lot of the diecast community to flits uh, i wouldn't be using it if it wasn't for paul so uh, it was nice to see a company actually recognize the contribution that somebody's made you know it, it's it's easy enough for them to just show that respect and appreciation and, and it made me like flits even more <laughs> So I used it to polish up the windshield. It wasn't that bad to start off with. Uh, you know, rinsed it off after that, and then it was time for gauzy, gauzy, gauzy. Another thing that I used because of Paul over at Fat Guy Productions. But uh, anyhow, you know, gauzy is just that added final coat that really makes this thing nice and shiny. And you'll see it at the end. It looks so good it's not even funny <laughs> and besides those of you who uh when you hear me say gauzy 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 those of you that partake in the uh associated drinking game i know you guys love gauzy too 
<laughs> Maybe for different reasons. But, you know, you just dip it in there, you wick off the excess. And you continue to wick off the excess. You're really trying to avoid any buildup remaining. It's, it's all you're after. And then you just set it aside and you'll want to cover it as I do in that uh, all familiar crayon box. If it looks like I finally changed the blue tape strip that I have on there, I did. <laughs> you know, when the, when the gauzy on the tape strip is starting to get thicker than the plastic that you're coating with the gauzy, it's probably time for a new strip. So uh, throw it on there. You know, throw the uh, crayon box bottom on there just to cover it. Keep any dust or uh, any things floating around in the air from landing on there. And uh, it's time again for more Foots Polish. I polished the heck out of this casting. Um, it, it polished up pretty well. I, I was pretty happy with the results. I also ended up using uh, Foots Polish as well on the little engine that's part of it. And there you see the engine. It's a separate little part of the casting, which it's interesting to me that they did it that way. I'm not sure why they made it a separate part. I mean, sure, the, the uh, cover in the back does a lift if you want to really take a look at that engine. Not that it's all that special. Uh, I did end up using a, that's a plastic bristle brush. I did not use a wire bristle brush on this. I had hit it with the foots polish and uh, it was looking pretty good, at least in my opinion at that point. So I thought, well, let me just go over it with a plastic bristle brush just to clean it up a little bit better. What's happening also off camera is I'm spray painting the body and, uh, it's not white enamel. <laughs> it's metal cast red. I wanted to jazz this little thing up a little bit. So, I mean, they were all white enamel. Really? <laughs> like I said, it's an ugly, cute car. It's one of those weird little things that's so ugly, it's cute. And so I hit it with the metal cast. You know, the red metallic, and then I went over that with clear Minwax polyurethane gloss. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm thrilled with the results. I was curious what it would look like in a different color. You know, different than, that. oh yeah, the back half of the body actually hooks on the base. There's only the one post near the front. But I thought in red, you know, it would pick up the red line on the wheels. And I thought, I don't know why. I look at this casting and in a way, I see a Pontiac Fiero. Maybe some of you see that too. Maybe I'm just old and losing my mind. Maybe both. <laughs> but uh, I really like it in the red. And it rolls like a red line. God, I remember those when I was a kid. The red lines are so much fun. So here's where we started. You know, it was well played with, well loved. Some kid had a lot of fun with that casting. That's all you can ask from, for your, from your toys. Here's where we ended up. I'm pretty thrilled with it. I hope you guys like it too. I mean, I'm sure the purists out there are cringing at the fact that I would take a red line and do something other than what Larry Wood or the, uh, the company intended for the red line. But I think it looks pretty darn good in red. And uh, you know, if I find another casting, I don't think I have any more of this particular one right now, but if I find another one, I'm gonna paint it in a different color. So there are some glamor shots coming up. I hope you like this build. I hope you've had fun with this build. I hope this uh, makes you want to go out there and maybe tweak some red lines a little bit yourself. This was fun. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'd like to take a moment too to thank my Patreon subscribers, my Patreon members. 
for all of their support. I really do appreciate it. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Catch you in the next one.